the realtor population is shrinking, with some markets seeing close to double-digit drop-off. Who are the sellers of today and tomorrow? We're going to find them. And what is the mindset you need to achieve massive success to adapt and thrive? Good morning. Thanks for being here with me today. I got a lot to go through today. We're going to take a look at where I believe the sellers of tomorrow are how you can find them. And then I'm gonna end today's call with some really critical questions that you need to be asking yourself, I believe, on the weekly to make sure you're aligned with this market and what's potentially happening. Also, if you would like a copy of my slides, always happy to share, just drop me a quick email and I'll reply back with the slide deck. So, hey, this I found to be really interesting and you probably are already feeling this in your business. You're probably most likely feeling it in your market. I know all real estate is hyper local. However, we are seeing a national trend and that is lower listings, lower active listings on Realtor.com, lower new listings coming on the market. And this is below pre-pandemic levels. So we kind of look at the past few years. And when we think about the inventory and active sitting inventory, we kind of throw out those years from the pandemic because the market was just so intense, so wonky. Uh, but we are now tracking below pre-pandemic levels. And it is no surprise because as we know, nearly seven out of 10 U.S. mortgage holders are are locked into an interest rate at 4% or less. So they're sitting comfy, they're in a good position, they're likely not ready to make a move and change up to a potentially eight handle interest rate, could be potentially, uh, we could be headed there. And we know that there are a lot of macroeconomic factors that are causing uncertainty in the market. You know, I look at the spread between the mortgage interest rate and the 10 year treasury, and typically we see about 100, 150 basis point spread between them. And currently we're tracking at about a 300 basis point spread between them. So we know there are a lot of factors. Why? Well, the, the big buyers of U.S. bonds aren't buying. Uh, one of the big buyers, number two buyer of U.S. bonds is China, and they're just not buying bonds. They're selling bonds. And so because of that, we find ourselves in a little bit of economic turmoil and everybody kind of going, what is going to happen? Uh, so interesting times. And then you throw in the interesting times of of our, our realtor community. And the commission lawsuit is now headed into its uh, third week. So it started two weeks ago. It started in um, a trial in the United States District Court out of Kansas City, Missouri. And we've heard from now, well, we had jury selections and this was an interesting tidbit on jury selections. So they had started out with 70 jurors and as they're doing jury selections, and again, this is for the commission lawsuit, Sitzer versus Burnett, um, or Sitzer versus NI are and it is massive. In the implications, I believe, are pretty huge. I believe it could really upend the way we share commissions uh, as an industry. And so I think that all eyes are on this trial to see what happens. And during jury selection, they started with 70 jurors. They whittled it down to nine. And juror after juror kept getting dismissed because they had sold a house during the infected time frame and they could be part of the class. And so jurors were literally ineligible from uh, being a juror because because they sold a home and they could be part of this class action. And so I found that to be really interesting. Uh, and then we heard from you know, the, the plaintiffs, they, they brought on their witnesses. They called Gary Keller to the stand. They asked Gary Keller about that script uh, that Keller Williams agents had in their script book about basically how to get a seller to agree to pay a full commission. Uh, and Gary Keller actually on stand said he never even seen the script. So I found that to be pretty interesting. Uh, we also heard from some of the other plaintiffs. We heard from one of the plaintiffs who is a, an older lady. She said she's a mom, she's a grandma. She sold four homes in her lifetime and bought five. And the fourth home she sold made her eligible to uh, be a plaintiff in this case. And what she said was, is that her buyer broker commission was like 40% of of her profit. And so she just felt like the system is kind of rigged and joined the lawsuit because she wanted to bring a better future for her children and her grandchildren. And the interesting thing about her on stand, she shared that her own mother was a realtor for 30 years. And so this lawsuit is just kind of crazy. Uh, we also heard from the defendants. They called um, they called their witnesses. They called the CEO of NAR. They called uh, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. And 
you know, I thought there was some really good testimony on stand from from these individuals, basically saying like, hey, there's no collusion here, there's no violation of antitrust, um, and so it's. Again, really interesting. We're probably going to see closing statements uh, today or tomorrow, and then the trial will be wrapped up. So I am so anxious to see what plays out in that. But the takeaway is, is there's a lot of uncertainty in the realtor community, not only just in the market. And so I thought that I had been playing with some data here, and I found a new data tool, and I want to share it with you. It's called Data Wrapper. And this data tool is incredible. It is what I'm using to make all of these charts that you're going to see here today. So go check it out. I think that you could really use this on a local level in your market. You could be making data on, you know, maybe the inventory and changes and all sorts of things. So definitely check out Data Wrapper. It is a free tool, uh, which I found to be absolutely incredible because of what it does. And it has an AI component. And so I had shared with you that I was going to be sharing an AI tool. Well, today it is Data Wrapper. The AI component is that it will take your data. You can just paste it in there. You can link it to a Google Sheet, and it will auto populate the data in the sheet for you, uh, make it usable. So definitely check, check out Data Wrapper. But this was interesting. Forbes came out with how much money real estate agents make per state. And I found this to be kind of fascinating. It looks like New Hampshire is number one at $94,810. So if you're looking for a place to move where you might make more money, uh, there's the top 10 states that realtors are paid in. And I found Number 10, Mississippi, to be kind of interesting. I wouldn't have expected them to be up there, but they are. Uh, and yeah, so a lot going on in the realtor community. Uh, there are a lot of us. And I made this one to show how many realtors per capita are in each state. Florida is number one. So if you're tuning in from Florida, you just got a ton of competition in Florida. But you're not alone because other states are right behind you. Uh, Hawaii was number two. Arizona was number three. I've always been told that, hey, if you're in Arizona, you are in one of the most densely populated realtor communities that exist. Uh, and this holds true. Uh, in total, NAR membership is about 1.55 million realtors across the US and Canada. And what we know is that we could see some major, major shakeout. And we already are. So there's already been some change in the realtor community. Uh, this shows the percent change based on the state. And you'll see the top 15 states that had a negative change. Number one was the District of Columbia. So Paula, your area uh, had a 7.85% dropout rate in the realtor community in the past 12 months. That was number one, pretty sizable. Number two was Washington. Number three was Maryland. And you can see the list there. Now, why is this so important for us? Because we're in a changing market and we have a ton of competition right now. And I think the question is always, how do you differentiate yourself? And how do you set yourself apart from everybody else? And what we know is that with lower transaction count, it's going to get pretty lean. And so I think that requires some pivots. It requires some adapting. And I found this, which you know came across my... Um, my Facebook feed, and it was a meme, and the meme said that the recession is confirmed. My Uber Eats was my realtor. I'm glad he still has his new Range Rover. And so when I first saw this, I you know, kind of laughed. I was like, ha-ha, you know, right? But the, the reality is, though, is I found this after. And this was actually the guy who the meme was made about, and he is a realtor, and he confirmed, hey, this meme was made about me, and yes, I am delivering for Uber Eats, making some extra money. Uh, basically, like, I don't have any closings. What else do you recommend? And what I know is obviously push comes to shove, and you need to go make some money, you need to go make some money, and there's absolutely no shame in that. But there's a ton of opportunity right now, a ton. And if only you find it. And the opportunities are a little bit hidden. And you have to think a little bit differently than maybe you had in the past. And it's not raining buyers and sellers outside like it was, you know, two, three years ago. And so we're going to have to go deep and we're going to have to find the sellers to actually, you know, get them to list with us 
or if you're using Zudelio, take one of your cash offers, and you're going to have to put some intentional work in to make that happen for you. And I want to share with you how I believe you can adapt and thrive in this market, it, despite all of the macroeconomic uncertainty. Because here's what I know, is most aren't going to be able to hack it. Most aren't going to be able to change their thinking, change their beliefs, and go after a new form of business. But I believe you can. I mean, you're on this call for a reason. You're on this call because you're looking to learn and grow and implement things. And so I believe that if you're listening to this message today, there is a ton of opportunity for you. I want to encourage you that times don't have to be lean for you in your business. Now, what we know about real estate is it's a 90-day cycle. Anything you do today isn't going to show up for 90 days. And that can be really difficult for a lot of us, especially if you are driving Uber Eats to make ends meet right now. But it is a 90-day cycle business, and we all know that. And so the efforts that you're putting in today aren't going to show up until next year, right? We're almost at November 1st. We're almost uh, two months left in the year, so we're almost done with 2023, and we're headed into 2024. And what you do today is going to show up down the line. And the reason why it is so important for you to shift your business is because he, here's the thing. We got this commission lawsuit brewing. Potentially, the way buyer brokers are paid could completely be eradicated. And if that happens, what do I think is the most likely course of action? Well, I know that probably NAR is already talking to legislators like the Federal Housing Administration to see if we can get commissions built into the loan, but that may not always be a solution. And what probably will happen is more buyers are going to go unrepresented, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but I believe that is a likely outcome. I also believe another likely outcome is more buyers are going to go directly to the listing agent. And so the best way for you to insulate yourself against all of this disruption is to be that top listing agent. And how do you do it when you've got seven out of 10 US mortgage holders locked into an interest rate of 4% or less? Well, you do it by figuring out where the sellers are for today. And where the sellers are for today, I'm gonna skin through them. So number one, we have the baby boomers. And I think that there is a silver tsunami that is about to take over real estate. And if you're not jumping on this trend, you are missing out on a ton of new business. What we know is that last year, 52% of all all home sellers were baby boomers. And so we know that it's the largest demographic of people selling their homes. So are you targeting messaging to them? Are you figuring out their own, their specific needs and how you can help them? And oh, by the way, the Cash Plus is one of the best product offerings for the baby boomer generation. The rehab component and how they can flip their own home with no out-of-pocket expense and how they can get this zero out-of-pocket home improvement sale is an it just an insatiable value proposition. So if you're not using that value proposition in your marketing, do. And here's the other reminder. You got to repeat your marketing message again and again and again. You know, we think that if we make a video about something or if we do something once, that's enough. It is not enough. You have to do it over and over and over and over ad nauseum. If you look at how many times you are marketed to, it is on the daily tens of thousands. You just don't even realize it because all of the messaging hits your subconscious. It gets filtered out and it's not brought into your reticular activity center to make you aware of it. However, when you're in, for instance, that consideration phase of selling your home, all of a sudden those marketing messages are going to speak to you because you are now in that decision-making phase. So baby boomers are a large percentage of home sellers, I believe, are going to be the sellers of today and of tomorrow. Okay, what else we got? Well, we've got the, the 40s. We've got death, divorce, downsizing, debt, and actually it's five, I can't count, my math isn't mathing, and diapers. And so all of these, these cohorts of people will still be the ones that are going to move because they have to, death, clearly, uh, if someone dies and there's a change in circumstance that is going to likely lead to a home sale. Divorce, uh, interesting thing about divorce. Half of all marriages end in it, sadly. And what we know in 2022, 54 almost percent of all uh, married people were, they owned a home. And so if you are not going after divorce or considering divorce or tooling yourself up to work with people that are getting a divorce, uh, you're missing out. There's a ton of opportunity here. And I know the tactics and the strategies that people have to go after these people, uh, you know, they're, they're intense. But the reality is, is if you want to survive and last, then you got to find the people that are going to sell 
in, if you're going through a divorce and you own a home, you are likely going to be selling. And so keep that in mind. And the cash plus also is phenomenal for, for people that are going through a divorce. In fact, we hear a lot of stories about how it is a divorce situation. And what they love about it is that first payout kind of gets them out of that hard spot. And it allows that home to be sold on the open market in that appropriate time frame. And so it just really works out well. Uh, downsizers. So if you look at the reasons that people choose to sell their home, downsizing is, is one of the biggest reasons. And not just for baby boomers, obviously, though, more likely for baby boomers. So I thought that was really interesting and wanted to share that. Now, let's look at debt. So we know that people have a ton of equity in their home, and we know that one of the things that unfortunately a lot of people may do is sell their home in order to pay off some debt and maybe get themselves out of some financial hardship. And so if we look at debt right now in the U.S., it's kind of alarming. I found this auto loan delinquency rates reaches the highest level since 1994. Credit card delinquencies also jump past pre-pandemic levels, so they're at about 7.2% right now. And so people are in financial trouble, and one of the things they'll look to do when they're in this trouble is to sell their home. Uh, I didn't pull foreclosure data, and the reason why is because we are still severely below pre-pandemic levels with foreclosures, and so I don't see foreclosures being a massive source of inventory for us anytime soon. Uh, and if I did, trust me, I'd bring it forth because I was an REO agent. I know that game really well. I would love to share with you a lot of the tactics and things that I learned while I did that. Uh, so if I see that to start to become a meaningful source of sellers, I will definitely uh, share that insight with you and give you strategies for that. Who else are today's home sellers? So we also have short-term rentals. Now, with short-term rentals, I know that a lot of people uh, are in a good position and they may not be selling. However, they're growing, it's skyrocketing. So now we have over 1.4 million short-term rentals in the US. And I believe that there will be people that sell because hey, they got into it, they didn't realize what it entails. And because of that, they decide, I'm just gonna sell it. Maybe it's too much work, or maybe they made a ton of equity and they wanna kind of tap into that equity, get out of it for whatever reason. I think that we're going to see some of these turn back uh, on the market. And so again, as I kind of look through all of these sellers, are you picking up on anything? What I'm picking up on is that each of these segments requires skill. It's going to require a higher level of negotiating skills, people skills, all sorts of things. And so as you look at these sellers, be asking yourself, am I equipped to help them? Am I, am I tooled up? Do I have the resources that I need to go after this segment of the market? Because these are the people that will still be selling in today's times. All right, let's also look at another seller of today, and I believe that the mom and pop landlords. So what we've learned with Zudelio is there are a lot of aging out landlords, and I wanted to give you some data regarding who owns rentals across the U.S. And what we know is there are about 50 million residential rental units in the U.S., and 41% of them are owned by mom and pop landlords. In fact, the average portfolio size of a mom and pop landlord is 12 homes. And so they own about a dozen homes. And what we know is that almost 50% of them are over the age of 35. And so most of them skew a little bit older. And what we know is that they will be aging out of that process. They will be selling their portfolios, maybe maybe the less performing assets initially and then scaling and, and selling all of them. But we do know that there is a trend. In fact, there is, uh, there is a fund that goes specifically after these mom and pop landlords. Like it's their whole business model is they completely target these mom and pop landlords that own about a dozen homes and they try and buy bulk portfolios. And the cool thing is with Zudelio is we do connect you to buyers that will purchase a portfolio of properties. And so if you have a portfolio of properties or somebody that owns multiple properties that's interested in getting cash offers, there's not a better way to get them those cash offers than to put them in Zudelio and allow us to source that portfolio pricing for you. It can be really impactful and you can really do some cool things for people by packaging together a portfolio and selling it. So those are, there's some, there's one more, there's one more seller that I see on the horizon and that's institutions. 
And the reason why is because the data. And so we know that one of the largest owners of single family homes, nationwide invitation homes, uh, they were a net seller last quarter. And so basically they sold more homes than they acquired. And what we know is this trend could continue for others. I looked at Amherst American Homes for Rent and, and they're, pretty, they're pretty even, but what I know is that they're probably disposing of less performing inventory uh, to kind of make their portfolio more attractive on paper. And so we're gonna see some of these homes come back onto market. Now, if you can get in with the institutions to sell their homes, uh, that is a feat. And you would likely get the goose that, that lays the golden egg. Uh, the neat thing is, is we do connect you to these buyers when they're purchasing properties. So almost all of them are still buying and selling, even though the rate at which they're buying has significantly slowed down. I don't see that trend changing in the near future. They will, though, at some point start to scale back up. And when they do, you have access to all of those buyers in the Zudelio platform. Right now, they're pretty much buying uh, the very good opportunities. So they're, they're making offers that are 57, 60 cents on the dollar. And the ones that are getting accepted, they're going for, but they're not being as aggressive as they once were. I mean, my goodness, there were times when they were offering, you know, 105% uh, of market value. So a lot has changed in the institution space and we could see some of their inventory start to come to market. The question is, what are homeowners thinking when it comes to selling their home? And so I wanted to share this with you again. I'm constantly li looking at the Google Trends and these questions continue to be at the top of the list. Here are the highest searched terms in relation to sell my home on Google Trends. So number one is sell my house fast. So if somebody is Googling selling their home, they are also 100% uh, of the time at Googling sell my house fast. So they want this to be quick and it could be because they're in one of those segments that I just talked about, right? It could be a divorce. It could be crippling debt. It could be this massive need to downsize because they just don't need the space anymore and they're fed up and they want to make these moves quick. And so they value speed. And with Sudilio, you can give them speed. You have one of the most incredible value propositions at your fingertips uh, with this platform and how we connect you to buyers. So the second one is sell my house for cash. So they're seeking this out, guys, with or without you. So don't you wanna be the one that's talking about these things, that's letting people know that you have these value propositions? Because it is the second most Googled search term in relation to sell my house. What's the third? Should I sell my house now or wait, right? That's what they're thinking. Is it a good time? Uh, and then also, should I sell my house or rent it? You know, you have people that are doing this, they're, they're doing like mental gymnastics, trying to figure out what is the best option for them. And you can come in and be that true real estate advisor and give them different offers and options and really help tailor that experience to them. Instead of just taking them down that traditional path that we've been all taught to go on, you gotta come to the table with different solutions. And hey, if they want that option or not, it's okay, it doesn't matter because you're the fulfiller of all of them. So whether they want to take a cash offer or whether they want to list on the open market, you can accomplish both of their goals. And so I really wanted to reshare this. I know I, I share this time and time again because there is no better way to market than if we can market to what the person's already thinking in their head. And this is what they're thinking. And so if you're making video content this week, I would highly recommend that you make some video content around these questions. And I talk a lot about selling your house fast, and I talk a lot about selling your house for cash, and so I wanted to give you a couple video scripts that you can use to really target these other two segments, the people that are thinking, hey, sh is now a good time, and the people that are also thinking, ah, should I rent it? Because those are some big considerations. And the neat thing is, is with your video marketing, you know, you can make videos, you can throw them on your social media, you can email them out to your database, you can put them on YouTube, you can run ads against them on Facebook and Instagram, which I highly recommend. And the neat thing is, is that all it takes is someone just hearing that message in the right moment for them to go, wow, this person like really knows who I am and what I'm thinking. They really understand my needs.
And when they feel understood in a marketing message, let me tell you, that is gold, gold for you. So here's a couple video scripts that you can use in your, in your video right now. Uh, here is one for, hey, should I sell my house now or wait? And I'm not going to read it. I've got it up for you. Happy to send you my slides, so feel free uh, to send me a quick email, and I'll get this out to you. Uh, and then here's another one. Should I sell or rent my house? Again, answering the questions that they're already thinking. Now, of course, any video that I'm going to, any video script that I'm going to share, I'm going to also highly recommend that you plug your cash offerings and that you end with a call to action to visit your site. So maybe you, you're using the Zudelio site, maybe you're using the widget, whatever the case may be, I'm gonna highly recommend that you plug that and invite them to take that home survey on your site uh, and see all of their cash offer options as well as their real value. All right, so there's a couple video scripts for you. There's the sellers that I believe will be selling now and over the next several months because I think that the traditional path of real estate it's gonna be a little slow, and I want you to be ready. You gotta have the right mindset too. So I'm a huge believer that 90% of your success is your psychology, so much so that in about a week and a half, I'm taking the entire US-based Zudelio team to Tony Robbins. We're going to his event, Unleash the Power Within, and we're gonna really work on leveling up our mindset because I believe that this market is going to take a different mindset. It is going to require us to constantly be re-examining those stories that we tell ourselves that aren't serving us, right? The stories like nobody's buying right now, nobody's selling right now, real estate's slow right now, interest rates are 8%, this market is going to tank, and I'm gonna go need to find something else to do because I just can't hack it anymore. We're gonna need to constantly be re-examining those stories we're telling ourselves, not just about the real estate market, but maybe about our abilities as well, right? Like maybe as, as we were going through uh, those sellers, you were thinking to yourself, wow, I, I'm really not, I don't really know much about short-term rentals. Or um, how would I even go about finding people that are getting a divorce? And so maybe you're telling yourself stories about how you're not equipped to help that segment of the market because maybe you haven't in the past. And so your mindset right now is going to be absolutely critical to your success. I think now more than ever, and as the realtor population kind of weeds itself out, what I know is the few that remain will be strong and we will have these resilient focused mindsets. And just because you're in a good mind space doesn't mean you're always going to be there because guess what? Those mental monkeys, they are waiting to pounce on you and they will, and they will come in and attack. And I think that it's interesting that, that we aren't our thoughts. And sometimes we can have a thought that's really not our thought. And we can just allow that thought to exist and dismiss that thought and replace that thought with better beliefs, beliefs about what you're capable of, about the future, about the people that you get to serve. And so I really think that our mindset is going to be absolutely critical. Not only is your mindset critical, but you really have to believe that you are capable of achieving the things that you can achieve. You know, I look back at my real estate career and I can remember back 20 years ago, I went to a real estate conference that was put on by Century 21 because I started at Century 21. And when I was there, I had the privilege and the opportunity to listen to a guy named Walter Sanford. Now, if you haven't heard of Walter Sanford, he is an amazing real estate coach. He's probably no longer doing it because this was like 20 years ago. But I sat in his conference and I listened to his, you know, his expired secrets and all of these things. And I truly believed that I could achieve similar results as he had. And because of that, it was a no-brainer for me. I anted up, I bought his course. And I think at the time it was, I don't know, maybe like 500 bucks, but it was like a mini fortune 20 years ago. And I bought it and invested in my business. And I went home and I immediately implemented just one of his systems. And that system in and of itself went on to make me over $300,000 in real estate. And it was because I believed that I could do it. I had the framework, I believed I could do it and I did it. So the belief has to be there in order for you to have the results that you're looking for, but not only does the belief have to be there, but you gotta put in massive 
intentional action towards your goal. Massive action. Like, like I think right now we are in a market where you're going to have to work harder than you've ever worked, and you're going to have to get more strategic than you have ever been. And all of the tools that you're using will help you do it. I mean, my goodness, I can't imagine having tools like we have now. Like, I can't imagine having Zudelio when I first started. It would have been so cool. Like, I can't even imagine. But the tool does nothing if you don't work the tool. And so you're going to have to take massive, intentional, consistent action and you're going to have to do it again and again. And that's where the consistency is really going to follow up. So you guys, work on your mindset, work on your beliefs, work on that action plan, be consistent over time. And the last thing I can leave you with on this mindset section is detach from the outcome. Like it'll come, it will come. If I go to gym today and I worked out for six hours and I work out harder than I have ever worked out in my life, if I'm like dripping sweat and throwing up in the corner and really going full send, am I gonna go home and have the results that I want? Am I going to have the physique that I want, the muscles that I'm looking for? No, not from one day. But if I go to the gym every day for 30 minutes, and I work out and I apply myself. Six months from now, am I going to have the results that I want? Yes, yes, I will. And so you have to take consistent action. It really is gonna come down to your discipline. And that's how I know that those of us that survive these next six, nine, 12, 18, however many months it may be before our market starts to stabilize, those who survive are going to be very mentally tough and resilient. And I believe that you can build on all of those things. So I'm gonna leave you today with five questions I believe you gotta be asking yourself in your business right now. The number one question is what action am I avoiding by making it more complicated than it actually is? I do this one to myself all the time, all the time. And uh, most recently, so our newest team member lives in Indiana and we're US based in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I needed to set up her payroll and set up my, my tax license with the state of Indiana and do all of that stuff. And I have been avoiding this like the plague. I've been avoiding it. And the reason why is because I was like overcomplicating it to myself. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's tax stuff. I don't really do well with tax stuff. And being in the position that I'm in now, I have to deal with it a lot. And so I was avoiding the research. I was avoiding making the phone calls. I was avoiding doing all of the things that it was going to take to get that set up. What are you avoiding by overcomplicating it in your mind? I know we're all doing this. And I think the answer to this question is going to unlock some massive productivity for you. The second question that you gotta be asking yourself right now is what do I know to be true that I haven't mustered up the courage to admit? And maybe this ties back to mindset, right? Maybe there's some limiting beliefs that you have about your abilities, about who you are, about what you're capable of. And you really got to attack those and you really gotta write them down and you really have to change the narrative on them. But what do you know to be true that you haven't yet mustered up the courage to admit? I think that the best way is to just identify it. Once you have awareness around that thing, you can move past it. So take a moment and figure that out. The third question is, where has my personal growth put a ceiling on my business and success? I mentioned that I'm taking the entire US team to Tony Robbins and one of the reasons is is because I know that Zudelio is a real estate software technology but who Zudelio is are all of the people that show up day in and day out to execute this mission to serve and support you in your business and to bring forth a digital transformation in real estate with a trusted advisor on the consumer side and who Zudelio is, is what really matters. And so I know that the next level for our organization lies in all of us individually. And so where do you need to grow? 
Who do you need to become that's capable of doing all of the things that you want to do? You know, I look at my own journey, and I have had to make some significant changes in my schedule, in my priorities, in my life, in order to do what I do on a daily basis. And so I know that oftentimes it is your personal growth that is going to be that tiny hinge that swings open a massive door for you in your business. All right, the next one. Why am I uniquely suited to achieve the goals and the dreams that I have? Why you? You know, you've got this burning in your bosom. You've got this this dream that is in your heart. And I believe that's there for a reason. I believe a lot of us numb that. A lot of us push it down. I believe that that's a lot of where the criticism and hate comes from others. You know, I look at a lot of my content that does really well on social media, and I get a ton of good comments, but I also get some really mean comments. And you want to know that every time I get a nasty comment, if I look at that person's profile, they're usually private. They're just keyboard warriors criticizing me. And what I know to be true is they're criticizing me because they want to be going after their dreams and they're not. And seeing somebody else go after their dreams when you've suppressed your own has to be incredibly frustrating. And they want to do anything and everything that they can to bring me back down to their level because it'll make them feel a little bit better about their pathetic existence. Don't deny your dream. It's your dream for a reason. Okay, this one. This is, this one is so impactful because it's so simple. And we all know what it is. We all know the thing that we should be doing that we're not doing that if we did do would get us the results that we want. So what is that one thing for you? What is the one thing that if you were to do it and you were to do it consistently, It would close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. Maybe it's picking up the phone and talking to people, getting over your call reluctance. Maybe it's reaching out to your sphere. Maybe it is finally making the videos that we've given you for the cash offer scripts and putting them out there. But what is that one thing that you know if you were to do it and you were to do it consistently, it would close that gap between where you are and where you want to be. And then based on the reflection today, what action do you need to take? Never leave the scene of a decision without taking some action. So I'm going to encourage you, after after today's call, I want you to write this down. And then I want you to take one small, could be, meaningful action step toward achieving your goal today. Don't waste this opportunity. You're on here for a reason. Don't waste this opportunity to take some action in your business that your future self is going to thank you for and really put yourself on that path of being somebody that actually has the business, is the leader in the market, and isn't worried about everything else that most realtors are going to get succumbed to over these next few months. Hey, thanks so much for being here with us today. I have a couple questions here uh, that I'm going to get to. Hey, John, good to have you on today. What's up, Bob? Nice to see you again as well. Sheila asked, "What what is the AI tool you are using? So the one that I shared today is what I'm using to create all of the charts. It's called Data Wrapper. And I absolutely love it. I know that there are so many use cases for for this in your business, uh, but it's a great way you can go in and make meaningful visual representations of data. So I know a lot of people find data to be very boring, but it can come to life when you make it into a cool chart. And so check it out. It has an AI component, and that is you can just paste your data into it, and it will take that data and allow you to create charts, graphs, all sorts of cool stuff. So that is the AI tool this week. Bob has a value add here. Don't sleep on pre-foreclosures. The numbers aren't crazy high, but the only ones going after them are the wholesalers. So there is opportunity. Yes. Okay, Bob, thank you for that. And 
perhaps I should have added them into my list as well because because you're right. The wholesalers are really going after them. Uh, and it could be you. Thanks for joining me today. Please make sure you like, comment, and ring that notification bell so you get updated of new episodes.